agreement, Lady Di gets Canada. <laughs> what, did I, what did I tell you? Oh, where were those guys? Hi, how you doing? <laughs> you know what would look good with that shirt? A tie. Any? Uh, on the program tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have revered, respected newsman and journalist John Chancellor from NBC, also from Living Color over there on the Fox Network, Jim Carrey, and uh, race driver uh, Michael Andretti on the program. Now, here, say hello to our friend Paul Schaefer. He's right over there. Good to be here again. You know, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio. Oh, oh, let's hear it. Well, I was walking by, there was a big truck parked by a warehouse, and a guy was coming out with a, his hands full of, I guess, restaurant supplies like right. this. Yeah. And the, the truck didn't know he was there, and the truck just pulled right away from him. So in order to get the guy's attention in the truck, the guy said this. He said, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> The truck just kept on moving. <laughs> I went up to the guy and I said, you know, perhaps maybe just one yo to get his attention yeah. and then express yourself and say, you know, excuse me, I'm here with stuff to put yeah. in the truck. <laughs> he turned around and beat the crap out of me, which, <laughs> which I thought was just a or, or what about yo, stop the truck? That's what was required, exactly. Or forget the yo, just maybe stop just, the truck. Maybe just stop the truck. You know, it's a, it's a special night. I don't mean to embarrass Bailey, but I know he's done this, and I'm just going to uh, go ahead and enter. This is uh, Bailey Stortz, our cameraman over here on the camera three. And uh, Bailey today, I guess because school is out, uh, brought in his nephew to watch the show. He's standing right over there next to my assistant. Get a shot of Bailey's nephew. <laughs> there he is, right over there. He's, he got him, in, got him in the page program. Bailey Stortz's nephew, ladies and gentlemen. Right. <laughs> Darn nice of you, Bailey. Storch's nephew. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, Leon. I guess that would be Larry Storch's kid. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. I don't think there was any point in doing that, Paul. <laughs> Just feeling loose, you know. Uh, you know, before we begin the big program, look at this giant box of comedy items I have here. Ladies and gentlemen, contained in the box, we have actual items for sale found in actual supermarkets here in the tri-state area. Paul, do you have music for this? Supermarket finds. Yeah, Get ready music. for real comedy fun. Here we go. Music. Here we go. We rehearsed for an hour to do that. Well, it showed. It showed. And more than, more than that, it shows that you care. Uh, here's something called Super Mario Brothers Shampoo. Do you see it? It's in this container right here. Super Mario Brothers Shampoo. Gee, I'm still using Pac-Man cologne. Here we have uh, waste basket liners. Hey, and as you can see right there in the container, they're ideal for waste baskets. <laughs> Damn, I've been using them as bed sheets. <laughs> Item number three. Free silver-plated picture frame with purchase of Kent cigarettes. There, you can see the silver frame right there. Okay. That's a picture of your Uncle Jim. He died from smoking. <laughs> oh, God, pull my back! Oh, oh, no! Oh, my back! Oh, jeez! Oh, my back! Oh, 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 I'm better, thank you. Item number four, reptile cleaner. <laughs> yes, I, I traveled with Ringling Brothers for a few years. No, I didn't have an act per se, but... Oh, oh 
change my back! Oh, no, it's gone again! Oh, please! Oh, oh. Okay, there it is. <laughs> it's all right now. What? Like it makes a difference? <laughs> we get them out of order, it makes a difference? <laughs> FBI pineapple juice. You know, the Bureau's been a lot more fun since Don Ho took over. <laughs> Mirror finish, one-piece knife. You know, it's nice and everything, but I used to enjoy putting it together myself. I, I'm afraid to bend over. I know. Oh, don't. The, the, the don't. bad luck I've been having with don't my back. Don't bend over. Just drop the stuff. <laughs> All right. Number seven. Oh, I don't think let's do number seven. Ah! Ah! Oh, geez, my back. Oh, no, Paul, my back is out again. Oh, please, quick, oh. help me. Oh. 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 Number eight, Viking fondue forks. Next to rape and plunder, those Vikings love their fondue. <laughs> Maybe a, a little salve before I go to bed at night. On the back? Yeah. How long have you had that week back? Oh, it started about eight minutes ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I do, ma'am. Are you a nurse? Are you a licensed nurse? Really? Could I see some identification? Okay. All right. We'll go upstairs and go upstairs and shower, and then we'll have you come down. Ah, right. uh, Sonny Bono cookies. You know the FDA actually allows small amounts of mustache hair in every batch. Oh, jeez. Do we have time for this? High Star True Fit Fly Front Brief. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> Beer Brand Air Freshener. Mmm, this place smells like the Kennedy Compound. Oh, there you go. That's it, we're done. Yes. Very nice. All right. We're, uh, we're going to do a commercial, and when we come back, Mr. John Chancellor will be joining us. that keeps a man feeling as clean and fluffy. You know what I like, Paul? The first time you came over to help me with my back. The second time you came over to help me with my back. The third time you didn't even bother to come over. Oh. And, and then the audience started screaming at me. Yeah. <laughs> even you had given up at that point. I guess I should have come over. <laughs> no, I don't think, no. I Believe me, if it had been me, I wouldn't have come over. Wouldn't have, you wouldn't have come over the first No, time. well, of course not. I had that bad back. Here we go. Tonight's uh, top ten list from the home office in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, ladies and gentlemen. Top ten ways the U.S. would be different if evil Knievel were president. <laughs> top ten ways the United States would be different if evil Knievel would be okay. president. That's the premise. Yeah, wild maniac stuntman, mm -hmm. evil Knievel. <laughs> Hmm, I thought I heard tumbleweed blowing across the desert. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear some tumbleweed crashing across the quiet. prairie? <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> Number 10, uh, nation's interstate system would include regularly spaced jump ramps. Number 9, uh, giant flame decals added to site of Air Force One. Number 8, Number eight, more fatalities in annual Easter egg hunt. Number 7, <laughs> Supreme Court packed with judges favoring 270 miles per hour speed limit. <laughs> Number six, Secretary of State would wear a special suit so he could get to uh, greet foreign diplomats while on fire. Number five, Senator Abbey Knievel would be screwing up savings and loan industry. Number four, 
White jumpsuit de rigueur at state dinners. Number three, a quail would still be vice president, but his kids would take him seriously. Number two, <laughs> Americans one step closer to national dream of seeing a guy jump over his own face on Mount Rushmore. Uh, these are in book form tonight. And the number one uh, way the United States would be different if Evil Knievel were president, more babies named Evil. <laughs> Our first guest is one of the most distinguished minds in American journalism. He is the senior commentator on the NBC Nightly News. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the program, Mr. John Chancellor. John! Jim Carrey uh, is on the program tonight. Michael Andretti is uh, also on the program. To Bailey, bring your uh, nephew back uh, tomorrow. <laughs> what was his name? Leon? Bring Leon back. Where the hell did Leon go? The... Leon took a powder. Ooh. <laughs> Smart kid. Now, let's, uh, oh, you know, uh, let's do something else now. You know, Paul, how uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, famous people are, are quoted as saying something? Sometimes they are, and, yes. And you wonder to yourself, should we take this at face value, or could it have yet another meaning? In other words, often a celebrity will say That's something, right. and he really means something else. Yeah, not necessarily being misquoted, but, but perhaps there is another meaning. Says uh, one thing, Well, I'll give you an another. example. For instance, here is Ronald Reagan. Uh -huh. uh, he was recently quoted as saying, the day I married Nancy is my fondest memory. Right. Yeah. What, what he actually was thinking there was, the day I married Nancy is my only memory. I So I see how that works, then. Uh, what's the Did you hear something funny? No. <laughs> well, at least we're consistent. Uh, <laughs> Donald Trump. Boy, what is the deal on this Donald Trump guy? He's huge. Are, have we just heard enough of this guy? Everyone cares well, a lot about Are we just tired him. about this guy? Everybody is very concerned with him. Donald Trump uh, recently was quoted as saying, Marla and I don't need a prenuptial agreement. Now, uh -huh. we think what he really had in mind there was, what difference does it make? I don't have enough money to get a haircut. <laughs> Clarence Thomas, the Supreme Court uh, nominee, you know, uh, was quoted recently as saying, once at a college party, I took several puffs off a marijuana cigarette. <laughs> what, he, what he actually had in mind there was, I was like totally baked. So a celebrity will say one thing and yet mean another by it. <laughs> All I can do to read these. <laughs> Jeez. I know. <laughs> Let's hear another one. We, we, we got our we got our we got our office issue of Boys Life today. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Jose Canseco, outfielder for the Oakland A's, uh, said it's a team effort. I'm just glad to have the good luck to be able to help out now and then. Well, what do you suppose he really meant, Paul? What does he mean? What does he mean? I'm carrying this sorry bunch of losers. <laughs> Secretary of State James Baker, it would be disappointing if Iraq continued to hide its nuclear capacity. What he was really thinking, the B-52s are on the runway, scud boy. <laughs> uh, Alex Trebek and Pat with $200 has a bit of catching up to do. What he's really thinking, of course, is, Pat, you're dumb as a box of dirt. <laughs> um, as a box of dirt. You're as dumb as a box of dirt. Cher, the lovely, the lovely, the talented Cher. She was recently quoted as saying this about uh, a motion picture she worked on. The director and I had some creative differences. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I think what she had in mind was he wanted to put the camera on other people for a while. <laughs> You know, she is a lovely woman. Mm -hmm. Fond of her, I understand. I like Cher. I've always liked Cher. We had her husband, Sonny, on the show last night. Not just last night. Yeah. 
Well, weren't you here? I was. <laughs> no, I was agreeing. Yes, we did. Oh, oh yeah. Last the Cleveland Indians. We've got our work cut out for us. That's what they're thinking collectively as a team. They're uh -huh. thinking that together. That's, what they That's say, collectively. yeah, quoted as a team. Uh -huh. Sure. But what they're thinking, we still haven't picked the bar we're going to watch the World Series in. Uh, Mike Wallace, uh, and now a few minutes with Andy Rooney, is what he said. But of course, what he meant was, I, I hope you have your remote control ready. Okay, uh, Rex Reed, this is our last one, Paul. Get ready to cover me here. Right. Rex Reed uh, recently said, a vivid, true-to-life story of passionate love between a man and a woman. And of course, what he had in mind there was... I guess. <laughs> oh, but they say they one go. thing and they mean another. Yeah, All right, we'll be back here with Jim Carrey. Yeah.